So I, I just um, am privileged to be here to share with us um, today, starting a series of eight weeks of um, enterprise development trainings. And I want to share with us as we comment on um, basically how to unleash your dreams, how to you know start um, to you know bring forth your dreams even when you do not have the the, the funding for it. Um, so over the years, I found out that a lot of people will say things like, "I have an idea, but I do not have capital. There is no." money to fund my ideas, what do I do? A lot of people were doing that. It was, it was such a, a huge um, challenge. And so I, I have developed this training model that has helped and I want to share with us this evening, trusting that it will be a blessing to you. All right, so um, we're very, very aware that um, a, a lot of people are afraid to get their ideas started because they do not have the needed capital that they require to get it started and, and that shouldn't be an issue really but it is for many people so how do you overcome that issue right um, i need to acknowledge the fact that i'm aware that a lot of people have ideas some people's ideas are ideas that they are passionate about some ideas are ideas that will generate funds and profits all right that, you're not so passionate about, but people have ideas. There's nobody who really is barren um, when it comes to conceiving ideas and betting your brainchild. But bringing forth a brainchild, okay, in this context, an idea is not a joke. It's a big thing indeed. All right, it is not a joke. And like I said already, we know that part of that um, um, process of betting the child has to do with funding your ideas. Okay. Um, so I want to commence by really saying very clearly how we understand that in this world that we live in, the tangible things, the physical things that we see, are controlled really and produced by the physical, I mean, by the unseen things, by the intangible things. And um, painfully, we live in a world that does not place very serious value on intangible things, right? And I'm not just trying to be um, uh, just just speak in that sense, but that's the truth. Uh, every idea you have, once you understand it, you have to fight for it. It's something to live for. So the intangible creates the tangible, all right? Because we know that all things are created twice. Everything is created twice. And um, first, it begins within, and then, of course, um, without as, as well. Everything that you think on the inside eventually um, comes forth. All right. Um, I just want to quickly lay the fact that you know success is who you are, and of course success is every success is created twice. All right. So in relating that to how you overcome the difficulty with betting a dream, all right, an idea when you don't have the capital for it, you need to understand really that I am first successful within. And it takes time really to bet things on the outside. But well, success is created twice. All things are created first on the inside and then without. So do not despise your dream, no matter how little. Alright, this is very important. Do not despise your idea, your thoughts. Alright, do not despise them. It eventually gets better. The pressure that you are under right now is having to bet a big dream at the very shortest time. It's usually the death. And, and, and here, you know, in this room, and having this discussion with you, I can tell you it's been a serious journey over the years trying to bet different things. And in my, uh, say, the last 20 years of my life, I've had to register about four different businesses. Two have failed. I'm still running one of them and, of course, another. But it's taken time for those businesses to pick up and for them to grow, right? Apparently, it's, it's not been um, a, a, a joke. Um, Okay, so um, I also want to mention to you that success is who you are. This is very important. It's who you are, not what you have. Success is who you are, not what you have. Success is who you are, not what you have. I want that to sing. I want to say it again. Success is who you are, 
not what you have. All right. I, I remember starting my business here in the city, and I didn't have anything. Uh, people would judge you for the kind of you know things you wear, the shoes you, do, the car you drive, and I didn't have any of that. And it took quite a bit of um, you know. It took, it took a lot on my self-esteem when people began to size you up and judge you for what you, what you looked like and what you didn't have, all right? But eventually understanding that I had something on my inside that um, was quite interesting for others to, to, to benefit from was very, very uh, useful for me. So I realized that I, I had something that the world needed I had to stay with it. I had to stay with it. I had to grow with it. And of course, it has become quite helpful to see how that has paid off um, me. So let me put this out there. I'm not sure if you're taking notes, but for those of us who have something you know, to take notes with, I want you to remember this. For you to achieve what you have never achieved before, all right? for you to do what you have never achieved before, do what you've never done before, you must first become who you've never been before. Alright? You must first become who you've never been before. I'll say that again. For you to achieve what you have never achieved before. For you to do what you've never done before. For you to accomplish things that you have never accomplished before. You must first become who you have never been before. So, in other words, we are saying that there's a difference between you being and you doing, okay? And so, in trying to do things, you become the person that can do such a thing. Let me give you an example. Um, sorry about the strength of the, the, the settled in the meat, but we're just trying to pick something very quickly. But let's just go on quickly. I, I was, I was um, a much younger entrepreneur on my campus days, and I, I started this, um, um, you know, bookshop called Kingdom Life Bookshop. It was called KLB at the time. And KLB was so huge, people um, were doing quite a lot with KLB. It was such a blessing to be part of KLB, to have started it. And eventually, what started in the knapsack, and then of course by the roadside, eventually became a big business. Became a big business. And it's, it, 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 I began to grow it. And eventually I wanted to um, get some more income or some more capital to expand the business, but it was quite challenging. So one of the things that happened first was this. I, I built a business plan, and in the business plan I showed how raising five million naira would be very helpful for the business and what I was going to do with it. It's okay, it's okay. And what I was going to do with it, all right? And then I took the business plan, and I moved to somewhere in Lagos, actually to see a very big you know, relative of mine at the head office of Oshoni Bank back then. And I remember walking into the office on one of those early, uh, you know, those days, and dropping my business plan. He looked at my business plan, and after, he actually, you wrote this business plan yourself? I said yes. And of course, it was such a delight for me because I was really expectant. It was time to, you know, spread and all that. Then he asked me a question. What's your current cash flow? I told him. Then he said, um, so um, how much do you currently handle? And I, I, I mentioned. He said, if I gave you this money, don't you think it would be too much of a sudden raise? Uh, he said, I, I like the fact that you think you can handle this, but you haven't proven that you can handle this. Now, honestly, I was not happy. I left that office quite, you know, unhappy. But something I learned that I'd like to share with you has become a very, very strong um, reason why I, I, I take this model and why we say success is who you are. And this is it. People do not invest in great ideas. People invest in great people. Investors don't just invest in great ideas because the idea looks very good. Investors look at the person behind the idea and says, okay, you are qualified as a person to grow such a business, to use this money. You're not going to run to Dubai. You're not going to go buy a car. You're not going to spend it anyhow. 
um, you're not going to mismanage this, this, this experience because you have um, what it takes to run the business. And this is very, very um, important. Very important. Very important. So I say this again for you to do what you have never done before. You must become the person that you have never been before. So you might be in business already, or you're trying to start one, you're trying to raise capital. Please don't be in a hurry to start. Be in a hurry to become the person that can handle what it is you are trying to get. So in funding your business, naturally, there are a number of sources that we look at. All right, we look at loans from family and friends, and we look at grants, and grants are very, very are around everywhere. Um, there's a Tony Bimelo grant that was um, suspended this year because of COVID-19, and now it's going to run at some point in 2021. Interestingly, um, becoming a Tony Bimelo mentor has been very, very eye-opening for me to see exactly how that runs. It's a very huge um, grant-giving platform. There are lots of grant-giving platforms around that will not call you back to give you the money. I mean, that you should return the money. That's what a grant is about. But for loans, loans have to be paid back sometimes with profits, sometimes without profits, all right? Um, then there's private equity, which has to do with you selling a bit of your shares of your company. So if you registered your company, a limited liability company, and you have a million shares, for instance, and you decide to sell 10% of your shares, 10% of your shares is 100,000 shares to someone who wants to part with money, the beauty about having to sell your shares is that you don't have to pay the money back. All you pay the people is when you begin to make profits, you begin to give them dividends. But a part of your company no longer belongs to you. All right? So at this point, let me mention this. I have seen a lot of young people who desperately sold about 50% of their shares um, just to make get some, some money. All right? Um, so, I have seen, for instance, a, 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 a few times, a protege, for instance, sold about 50% of his company for 5 million naira. And I, 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 it pained me so much because that's like being in a hurry to get money because um, it's very tough. So do not look down on your shares. If you know you're growing a, 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 a brand, you're going to grow an organization, you're starting small and it's going to grow much. Um, I need to be disconnected. It does help. It does help. Um, so, of course, if you have assets, please disconnect them. If you have assets, you can sell them as well. I'll give you an example. He walked into my office and said he needed some money to go back to school. And it was surprising to see that this person had two very massive phones on, their, on the table. So here I was using a very small techno phone, all right? And then the person walks in and says, I, sir, I need money, sir, to go back to school. What do you need money for? I need it for school fees. So I asked the person, how much are those phones? The estimate of those two phones were over 250,000 naira, big phones. I don't want to call the names of the phones, but this was a young student on campus. So I said, you see, you don't need school fees because you have your school fees on your phones. Why are we use two phones this big with four SIM cards and you're not a business person. You need to go and sell one of those phones and of course turn that phone into the funds that you need. Alright? And that's the same thing with a lot of people who carry very big bags, wear big shoes, alright? There's nothing we look wrong with looking good. Alright? Um, we have people who have a whole land on their head because they are Brazilian or Peruvian is close to half a million, all right? And so, at the moment, you, you, I've gone to phone shops when I see young boys come in and they are paying half a million for a phone. That, those, are, those are assets. Once you have them, you could part with them, get something cheaper and smaller, and put into your business, all right? Let me just end with this. I had a neighbor once who was going to start um, a company that was going to be producing bed sheets and underwear, and when she heard me share this particular module I'm sharing with you, she remembered that she actually had assets. So what did she do? She went into her wardrobe, she brought out her gold, 
gold chains and wristwatches and earrings that she had had over the years. She bought them from school when she was a student and they had appreciated them. So she called a lot of Hausa guys to come in and they paid value for it. She raised the capital for the business and she was uh, able to start. So the truth is that there are a lot of people with this. And of course, one of the major and most important things you need to understand is that you are the first source of funding for your business. You are the biggest and the most important source of funding for your business. And which brings me to the last source of funding, you. If the first is the last, all right, you need to look at yourself. So in other words, you have to manage your cash flow. And there are things you do with your money, everything. So if you have a job, for instance, how do you spend that? And I'm going to talk about that just before I close. So you have money all around, all around you. Remember I was going to mention this earlier, that I just mentioned that you can start your business without cash, but you cannot start your business without money. So the question is, what is the difference between money and cash? All right? So there are, there's money everywhere, but you may not have cash. It is possible that you do not have, all right, um, cash in you or you don't have cash in your bank account, but there is money everywhere. There is money everywhere. So um, let, me, let me remind you, we did the set and subset in maths when we were in secondary school. I'm sure you remember that. That is the relationship that money and cash has. Money is all right, a medium of exchange, yes, so is cash, but you can have cash, all right? You can exhaust cash, but you can still have money around you. So if you don't have cash on your pocket, on you, you don't have cash in your account, you still have money if you can understand that there is money everywhere. If you look around you, you have other forms of money that you need to use. For instance, all right, real estate is money, okay? I know many young people, especially in the same, those of us who are single and just starting, just out of school, we don't have real estate. But it's possible you are watching me right now and you have access to real estate. That's money right there, okay? And it keeps appreciating, all right? Shares, stocks, bonds, those are, those are, you know, forms of money. You might not have cash on you, but if you can sell some shares you bought, uh, my wife and I used to buy shares when we were in school, and of course, those shares are appreciated, now, here we are, selling those shares, you can make some money out of that. So, you, could, you, you have a lot of money around you. I just gave you an example of a woman who started her business with gold she had bought as a student. Selling them, that's, that's precious stones, that's what we call precious stones, okay? So you have a lot of chain, and the beautiful thing is this, um, you, you, could, you, could, you could buy gold today, it appreciates in a few years, so you keep them down the line. Over, over time, you realize that you have money even if you do not have cash, all right? Then, of course, we have royalties, we have patents, all right? Then there's a brand, of course, and that is important. That's why I was talking to you earlier about not being in a hurry to sell so much of your shares, especially when the business is just taking off. Because if you focus on brand development, ultimately that brand begins to attract money. Let me give you an example. When you begin to manage, you started your account with a microfinance bank. Eventually, the banks that you keep your money with or that you do business with, having seen your cash, will begin to chase you with loans. So what has happened is that your brand has become trustworthy. It has become, you know, something that can now attract, attract the kind of value that it could not attract initially. So this is it. So a brand is money, all right, ultimately. Now, I just want to mention this as well. Skill is money. I'm talking about forms of money. I told you that cash you may not have, but you have money everywhere. Okay? I told you the relationship between sets and subsets that we did in secondary school. This, the money is the set, the cash is the subset. But there are other forms of money, okay, that we have access to that a lot of us take for granted. Okay? So, skill. Skill is, is money. Skill is money. So you can bake, you can sew. So you, you, you know what it is. Uh, um, you, you have a skill to, to, to code, to make websites, you know. 
what you have in your hand at that point is a skill, something you know how to do. In your bank account, there is no money. So you can convert your skill by providing your skill to people, and then money comes to you. So skill is money. In many francophone countries around Africa, they have said to themselves, no matter how many degrees you have, they want it, uh, you know, every man on skill. So you're coming out of school, even if you have an MBBS, you went to study medicine, you still go get a skill. All right, and what that does for you is that when you don't even have a job, you have a skill to train with, okay? So you can use your skill as a source of raising funds for your um, business. Knowledge is also money, all right? You, uh, it's, I can't even begin to talk about this, but there are loads and loads of experiences that we've seen around the world, all right? From the story of Coca-Cola to the story of Guinness to the story, yes, knowledge, all right? Right now, what we're doing is just talking about, about what we know has made a difference in our lives, okay? Uh, many of us who have grown businesses didn't start with a silver spoon in our mouth, all right? And then a lot of young people who come around, see what we're doing, the volumes we're pushing, and then they wonder, how did you do this? What did you do? Knowledge made the difference, all right? One of the things that I learned earlier was that it takes time to grow anything. That's knowledge, all right? And one of the things that gave to me is that it gave me staying power, it gave me consistency. So knowing pretty well that it's possible to start a business and it will at some point be challenging is already knowledge for you. Staying power is huge knowledge, all right? Understanding what to do when you go through certain issues is huge knowledge. And you need that kind of knowledge to be able to you know, navigate through life and through your business. So knowledge, 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 knowledge is power, all right? Knowledge is power, knowledge is money. Idea is money. In fact, um, my pastor and mentor wrote a book, Ideas Rule the World, all right? Everything, though I have said that investors do not fund great ideas as well. They actually fund the individual or individuals, the entrepreneurs behind, okay? So it's, it's but in the same sense, you realize really that a great person, a great entrepreneur, without a great idea, will still not attract funding. So ideas is actually what attracts the money ultimately. Okay? Um, for let me mention this, it might just be unimportant to you, but health is money. You can have so much money, if you do not have good health, then you don't have anything. So why is that one said? I think that's big grand. It says if you lose um, uh, money, you've lost uh, nothing. When you lose money, when you lose cash, if you were swindled, you've lost nothing. So when you lose your health, you've lost something. A bit has gone. But when you lose integrity, all right, you've lost everything. And that's why one of the forms of money, the next one we're talking about, is integrity. Integrity is money. Integrity is money. Someone says, ah, how can that be money? It's actually called social capital. It's called social capital. So there are lots of people right now over time, who suppliers begin to supply huge sums of product to without them making any deposit at all. What has happened is that with time they grow trust. So I have also seen entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, starting their own businesses, and what they did basically was to leverage on another's integrity, maybe their parents, their uncles, to get supplies. All right? So what was that about? There was no cash, but somebody had integrity. That's why you call somebody a shorty, a guarantor, things like that. Just, just to ensure that there is some level of integrity in that transaction. Okay? So you do not want to joke with your integrity level at any point. You can't get a loan, you can't get a grant, and go and use to buy a car, and go and use it to build a house. You can't do that. You don't want to do that. Okay? So integrity is money. It's social capital. And right around, around here, it's so difficult to run too many businesses. For every young entrepreneur who is currently doing a lot of online things, you realize when you purchase things online these days, you realize that it's quite difficult to actually get people to really trust. So what happens is that if I order for a smart bag now, all right, like this corner one now, sometimes when Junior is bringing it or whatever platform is bringing it, they tell you, okay, when, you, when it arrives, you pay. Why is that so in our economy? In most developed parts of the world, once you pay, you pay, and then you go receiving it. But there's a level of mistrust in our own client in this part of the world, so it makes 
business difficult to, to, to run for a lot of online people. And lastly, I want to add this one, and this is a very important one, relationship. All right? There are more expressions, more forms of money you can add as, as you should think about them. But remember, relationship is money. Relationship is money. This has worked for me so much. I'll give you an example, very quick example. I used to run my, you know, my training in my office from my house when I came into town, um, into Worry from Lagos several years ago. And after two years of doing that, I realized it was time to move on. But I didn't have the money to go rent a training space, to rent an office. So what I did was I walked up to two of my friends who were, you know, they had a, a, an office together and attached to that office was a training space somewhere on Refinery Road. So I walked up to them and asked them politely to allow me to come share the office space with them and also pay some of the rent. But you know what they did? Because it was already some months into the year, they said, please, you can stay with us for this year and next day you can. So I stayed about seven to eight months without paying the rent, all right? But I was able to leverage on the relationship that I had to pick my first office in the city of Worry out of my house. Amazing, amazing friends, and all right? Uh, shout out to them, big up to them, and honestly, that's how it has been. I could give you loads and loads and loads of examples of how, you know, relationships have actually helped. Um, so, you want to start a business if you are about to start and you're still thinking, I don't have capital. I want to take you back to the beginning. When God was about to create the world, he was about to start a company called the universe. There was no money. Scripture talks about the fact that the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. So that was a problem that needed an entrepreneur to solve, a world-class entrepreneur, but there was no money. So what did he do first? The first thing he did was let there be light. It is a very serious pointer to what we need before money. He said, let there be light. Light is revelation. Light is knowledge. Light is know-how. What that means really is this. Every time you're set to start a business, don't look for capital first. Look for light. If you look for light, you will get answers. All right? And I'm not just talking about going to school. Now, going to school is important, but I am talking about education, all right? Whether you've been to school or not, it's important to get education every day. And what is education? It simply just means bringing out the best from within, and you go to bring, to draw out from within, all right? That's what education is. So if you look at the relationship between set and subset that I talked about earlier, money and cash, it's the same relationship schooling and education has. Schooling, is a form of education, but education is bigger than schooling. All right, so schooling is this. I mean, education is the set, schooling is the subset. Why am I saying this? Because there are a lot of people without certificates who have employed a lot of people with certificates, and somebody out there can just say, "Ah, but he didn't go to school." The man didn't go to school, but he's educated. He was educated. That's why he was able to start the business that has employed him. So don't look down on a person without a certificate, but understand the value of the education they have. They know something that you do not know, all right? I once had a friend who was working for an organization. He got very angry that he was the one providing so much, and then he decided to resign, to start his own. And when he resigned, life became very difficult for him, all right? It was a few years later, we both sat down to agree that that his old boss may not have had a degree or two, and this man had quite a number of degrees, about three degrees, all right? He said that his old boss might not have had the degrees he had, but the man had something he did not have. He was a rate maker. He knew the power of relationships. When all of them would leave for their houses after work, the said boss will go to certain areas to club here to go and register just to meet the who is who. So he opened the doors, and then the people he employed go to do the work. Now, I'm sharing this because sometimes, some of us don't understand, when I'm talking about light, this is exactly what I mean. Having to understudy someone who actually has gone ahead of you, all right? And that's what, 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 what I'm talking about with regards to, to, to light. So how to become valuable, all right? How do you become valuable? How do you become the person that cash flows after? Some of us it takes years, some of us it takes 
you know, 10, 20 years to become the kind of person that attracts the kind of, you know, funds that we need to achieve the dreams we have in our mind. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. And I'm going to talk about that in just a bit. But I want to add this just, just before we move on. I know I have some 10 minutes left. But this is, a, this is important. There are two types of entrepreneurs. There is the credibility enabled entrepreneur and there's the credibility deficient entrepreneur. Please, those of you wherever you're listening from and you're tuned in from, I want you to remember this. There's the credibility enabled entrepreneur and the credibility deficient entrepreneur. The credibility is the constant word there. Credibility has to speak with, it speaks of track record, all right? It speaks about um, um, the experience you have over time, all right? Um, like I said, great investors, smart investors, don't just invest in great ideas, in brilliant ideas. They invest in brilliant persons or great entrepreneurs. So who is a great entrepreneur? A great entrepreneur is one who has a track record. So I'm coming to you, yes, you. I need 10 million now to start a business. One of the questions you should ask me first is, do I have the experience to run that business? As a smart entrepreneur, you shouldn't just throw your money at me because you are my uncle, because you are my friend. You should ask me, you should check my background to know if I am credible enough to manage that money. And that's what credibility is about. It speaks of experience, it speaks of track record, it speaks of, you know, knowing where you're coming from. So there are a lot of us that are street smart entrepreneurs that don't have real credibility. You've never worked in a bank, you've never worked for anybody. Yes, you're, you're like what we call hustle today. You're hustling and trying to make things work out. There's no credibility on your journey just yet, all right? Nobody has trusted you yet with, with one million, with two million, with three million. So you are not permitted, for instance, to go and ask for that money. If all you have handled so far is 50,000, then your next bet should be anything between 100 and 500,000. And someone said, no, 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 this, I'm ready, I'm very ready. Just give me that 10 million. You will see what I will do with it. It is not true. It's not true. Money has a voice. There's a way all of a sudden, this person that is not credibility enabled will just become anyhow, will just start behaving anyhow because the money is just too big. Until the money becomes the size of which you are usually able to manage, you will not rest. You realize that you just will spend it. That's when all of a sudden you think of a big office space, a big generator that you don't even know the power, the KVA, just so that you can. That's when you think of very stupid things. But when you manage your space, you manage your, your size, you realize that you think better. When the money is bigger than your size, you would misbehave under that money. There's no how. It is impossible for you to get 10 million. If you are not capable of managing 10 million, you shouldn't go look for it. And it is a smart uncle, a smart friend that will say, no, just one, wait a little more. But what we find out, and I'm speaking from example, I realize, for instance, it's easier for me to raise the volume of money I need now than I was able to raise five years ago, than I was able to raise 10 years ago. And guess what? The dreams I'm pursuing today are still the dreams I had 10 years ago. I have been consistent. What has happened is that that dream has gotten bigger. But it's the same dream. It is the same dream. Somebody saw me a few years ago just doing this on Facebook and says, I am not surprised that you are still doing what you're doing. I'm not surprised that you're still on this journey. I remember what you said on campus. I'm very grateful to God that 10 years later you are still doing it. That's consistency. So I haven't left that part. But what has happened is this. I have built enough credibility, enough track record to know that if I want to raise certain funds right now, it's easier now. It's not because the money was not there before. It's because I was not ready to receive that kind of money. So do not fight people who are not funding you. Focus on becoming a person of value and all the money you are looking for will come after you. Like I said, it takes time. It takes time. It takes time. Do not be in a hurry. It takes time to grow yourself, to become the person um, that, that money will follow, all right? It takes time to grow competence, it takes time to grow credibility, all right? It takes time to grow credibility. It takes time to grow credibility, okay? Um, I, I just want to say this to you, just in case you're looking directly at me and saying, ah, I've been wanting to start this business over time and maybe, 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 
all right? There are a long number of excuses I wanted to just drop into the, 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 the trash can right now and just burn it, okay? Um, forget the excuses that you, did not, you, you don't have a job, you don't have a degree, forget that. I don't have a degree. Some other people will say I don't have capital, of course, we're talking about that. Some people will say I don't have destiny helpers, no, I don't have rich people in my family, nobody to help me, all right? Some others will say there's no money in this city. I remember hearing that a lot when Shell moved out of Worry and moved to, to Port Harcourt. I heard a lot of us saying, ah, money, there's no money in this town anymore. Worry is. And what I kept saying was this big brands may have relocated from, from this environment and moved around, but that has given room for smaller brands to evolve. So, for instance, on Airport Road in this airport, about 15 years ago, many of the businesses that are on this road now were not here. They were bigger companies. They've all relocated. All right? And nature of us no vacuum. What happened? Smaller brands were better. And they stayed consistently and are beginning to grow. So do not tell yourself there's no money in this city. As long as there are people in this city, there's money. There's money everywhere. I can tell you for a certainty, this is one of the richest lands in this country. I can tell you that for certainty. All right? Of course, do not also give the excuse that you have to go abroad before you can make it. And the biggest one of all is the fact that uh, the government is not helping. Now, I understand that thing. I understand that there is a lot to do. The government needs to produce the enabling environment for us to do well, all right? But believe me, before those enabling environments are set in, don't give yourself any excuse, all right? So I wanted to start a business in 2015, 2016, 2017. Now this is 2020, I'm still wanting to. When the year 2020 ends, nobody will award you for wanting to start the idea. Alright? And nobody funds, God does not give supply to what you want to start. He supplies what you have started. Alright? So help is coming on your journey. Alright? On the way. Help is on the way. You remember that song? Help is on the way. So get on the way and start it. Don't wait for things to be perfect before you become, alright, uh, the one who's going to start. So let me, let me begin to round up, and I want to share this with you. How do I get started? I, I, I invest to this in five minutes, all right? Let's see how much I can do in five minutes. How do I get started? So I have this dream, Mr. Rumi, I have this dream. Uh, I, I, I want to own a big school. How do I get started? You know, um, my wife and I are privileged to have started a school in the last two years, and of course the COVID-19 has really been falling, but it's been an amazing experience. All right, I, I, I have this, okay, I'll share this with you, and then we'll round up. Number one, start with what you have, all right? This is very obvious, it looks very obvious, it's everywhere, but what I'm about to say to you, please put it into practice immediately. Start with what you have, and start from where you are, that's number one and two. So, what do you have, that's the question. Number one, you have an idea. Number two, if you do not have the skill set to push that idea, then you need to go and build the skill set for it. So, what do you have? That's the thing. What do you have? What do, you have? do you have the personality to, to, to run a business? Do you have the skill set? Do you have the competence? Do you have the same power? If you don't, please take inventory. That's what you call a personal SWOT analysis. Check your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your, tre uh, and your threats. Understand all the assets you have as a person. Those are your strengths. Okay? Because, on, uh, in fact, one of the things I've decided to do lately is to discourage people from starting businesses and telling them. And ask me why. Because I'm tired of seeing people run into starting businesses and pull out. Does that mean I want you not to feel? No. But I found out that if know a more interesting way to start a business and I'm going to talk about that in a bit. But if, for those of you listen to me, you've grown capacity, it's time to start, it's time to overcome the fear. What you need to do is to start with what you have. I give an example. Many years ago, while I was still in school, I used to go run my trainings in a hotel close to where I was staying. Far back at that time, I would pay 10,000 naira for the whole for that time. So I realized this thing was eating into my pockets. So what did I do? I moved into a new hostel in school and I decided to set up that room as a training room. Yes, that's what I did. Every single student around us had flat screen and home theaters in their room. 
I went to the town next door called Obiaku and bought big white board, marker boards, and bought 20 white chairs, all right, and set up the room. In the morning, my friend and I, who's currently in Abuja, by the we will move our mattress to the next room and set up the place like an office. When we go to the home to, to, to for lectures, we had one guy who had secondary school was always there. On the door of our host, of our hostel room, he was it, 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 it was the only um, a company in that in that hostel. There were 40 rooms. I was in block A. You see Impact Global Consulting. Yes, the same Impact Global that I run today. Yes, the same one. Okay. And so when my friends will come to the room, they'll knock the door and they'll ask us. Are you in the room or are you in the office? All right? Are you in, the, are you in your room or are you in the office? Because by day it was an office, and by 7 p.m. at night, the mattress came back into the room. All the trainings I was having everywhere, we began to have there. How did I manage to put uh, 40 rooms, okay, that's 39 other rooms, to cooperate with my organization that I was going to be having training? What I simply did, because I was the one leading the devotions. I begged them, look, today is training day, and they understood. So what they did was that they all reduced their so Anybody forgot to I know, turn their volume down, they go and tell the person, oh, who is having a training? So what I simply did was that on those days, I got the snacks and made sure that everybody had more snacks. But I was friendly with everybody. I'm a, so my complimentary card, the very first one I had, was right there on campus, the same in Park Global. It was a room in Kanomesi, in Abraka. And what did I do with it? And I was going to write the complimentary card, instead of writing room A6 on it, I said suit A6. I didn't say Kanomesi Hall, I just wrote Kanomesi. Instead of writing campus 2, and I just said Abraka. That's how I wrote it there. Suit A6. Now I have moved to this place where I'm talking about, Bembo, it's called Bembo Village. And I wrote on the card, all right, that says a, block A now, A14. Suit A14, all right, then uh, um, send Donald, and then instead of saying um, Abraka, just wrote there, Bembo Village, Abraka. Just packaged it to suit. So when I go for conferences, and people bring out their complimentary cards, I will share mine. Nobody wanted to know whether I was a host or not. It was just packaged. So I started with what I had from where I was. I used what I had to be able to get what I wanted to get done. It saved me the, the stress of going to, to pay 10,000 naira to you know, a hotel not too far from us. So I used what I had. All right? That's what we did. So I was having this training a few times. I've seen a lot of people break free from, you know, the, the inertia that they, they, they've been trying to overcome. And guess what? I just share one or two of that and in closing. One young man, uh, I don't need to call his name, he was a caterer, he needed to start his business, he had been laid off, he was sitting in the training room listening to this training. And he heard me sharing how I started with my room. So he left the room, the, the training room that they were somewhere in town, and then he went home, raised his mattress up, and pushed it to the wall and turned half of the entire room into a, 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 a factory where he grew. And so he got a show glass and put right in front of his house and began to put his snacks there, all right? I had taught something about working for free, and I, I wish I could end with that, but one of the things he did was that he went to someone who could give him flour and sugar and everything in the for free. He came home, made his first supplies, and took it to a bank, the same bank who hosted us for the training. So he went straight to the manager and said, I just finished this training you, you, you sponsored. I was one of the people. This is what I've produced. I want to give all the staff for free. So the manager said, no problem. I'm talking about a bank on this airport road. All right? So this young man went in there, distributed all the snacks for free. We buy everything, he distributed it for free. Now he was so good. This is where skill comes in. This is where experience comes in. This guy had worked in a fast food. He had been laid off to, he had the experience, he had a track record with what he wanted to do. So his snack tasted good. When the MD tasted it, he summoned him and told him to sit down and called the head of admin and told every 
everybody who have collected that snack of free to please pay that this guy cannot go straight to Scott's funeral, like, just like that. The truth is this. He got his first breakthrough from that man. From that point, he started supplying man. Because he decided to practice something he had had. He started from where he was with what he had. He had no cash, but he had people who could give him snacks, I mean things. And so that's exactly what he did. He used what he had. He had a relationship. And of course, the rest is history. Right? Young boy says, Sir, I want to start a laundry business. How much do you need to start? He says 200,000. 19 year old young man. Why do you need 200,000? Then he begins to list. I want to rent a shop. I need a washing machine. I did this. I need that. I need that. When he finished, I got the picture. I said, How much do you have? I don't have anything. But you have the expense in years. How long have you worked in a laundry business? He lost his father early, so he didn't finish school. He had done laundry for almost six years. So I know this business. I agree. Take some of my clothes. Use it. Let's see how good you are. So look, I don't have money to give you, but I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Start in your house. Use your house for your first shop. Because if you go rent shops, you're going to incur more bills. You're going to pay local government. You're going to pay security. Like you're going to pay all kinds of things you don't know. Your profit is going to be diminished. He said, that's true. You need a generator, you need to repair this. So use your house. Where you are, start from there. Use your house. Young boy you know, so went home and decided to talk to his mother. Mom, I will pay the electricity bill because I'm going to be ironing at night. So this is what he did. His mom's shop was right in the front of the house. They had a, 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 a wire right there. He began to dry people's clothes right there. He was washing with his hands. The mom became his first staff. She watched the clothes, make sure that nothing got missing. The younger ones will help him pack the clothes in. At night, when everybody went to bed, he began to iron. He would package them and put them into a nylon bag and deliver to us the next day. That was how this guy's business started. The rest is history. He started with what he had. He did not wait for what he did not have. All right. And so I'm saying this to you, and it's very, very important. But the final thing I want to say here is that you need to serve someone. So start from where you are, start with what you have, that means you start small, then you grow into your vision, that's number four. Number five is that you need to serve someone, and this is very important. I'm going to stop here. Serve someone. All right? Get a job. Please, get a job. Ah, but Mr. Rumi, I thought you were speaking to people who wanted to start a business. Yes, I am. But please get a job. Please get a job. Okay, Mr. Rubin, there are no jobs. I have tried to apply for jobs. I don't have jobs around. People are, they, they, they know, they're not, okay, this is what you do. I want you to do what I did. I'm going to beg you. Get a job, work for somebody for free. Please, if you can hear this, capital F, capital R, capital E for free. Go and work for free. Why do you want me to work for free, sir? But I need the money. I'll tell you something. Every job gives you a few things. About four things now. I, I, I used to talk about things. But every job you get will give you a salary, will give you experience, will give you access to relationships and networks, but it also gives you fulfillment, especially if you're doing what you love. So let's take the first thing. Between your salary, the experience you get on the job, and the relationship you build, the salary is the least of your worries. Because if you leave that job today, the, the salary stops. But you go with the remaining two. You go with the experience, and you go with the relationships. Between the relationships and the experience, the relationship is more important. Why? Because your experience will become obsolete at some point. In five years, the way you do what you do will change, and certain new ways will happen. But your relationships will stay with you. So relationships I had while I was working in Lagos up until now. Some of my friends are, are, are in the UK, all right? My classmates are around the world. I still keep those relationships. Some of them are becoming, tomorrow a classmate of mine will become a governor. The best time to know that governor is not to, it's not when he becomes the governor. That's why relationships are important. So when you go to work with your boss, work for free. Even if you don't have a salary, understand that you are getting more than your salary. You are getting experience, because you need that. Remember, credibility enabled. You need experience. Your investors will ask you for experience. So you need it. You need to 
you want to serve somebody who looks like where you are going to. Find out how they deal with difficult challenges. Find out how they overcome what they overcome. I'm telling you, you need it on the journey. It's like that for everything, whether you're going to do social enterprise or you're going to do profit, it's like that. So serve someone. Serve someone. This is a generation that wants to have complimentary cards and the MD CEO, but they've not served anybody. Please, I beg you, go and serve someone. It's one of your greatest assets. Your willingness to serve someone and submit is one of the greatest assets you can have. So I'm going to stop here. I trust that this will be useful to you. And at some point, you can understand how this works, all right? Um, I, I, I hope this has been um, rewarding for you. I hope it has been a blessing to you. And I pray that really, that ultimately you would apply the things that we're saying and that you would build capacity with what we're, 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 we're taught you, all right? Um, if you are quite interested in, you know, getting to know a little more um, beyond this point, all right? You can just connect with us, um, drop, drop an email um, right there on the screen, we'll reach out to you, all right? Or just Ruben Daniels on any screen, on any handle. There's a singles forum, like I said, it's gonna be eight weeks of, you know, running this with different people. They're gonna be different people. So please follow the singles forum uh, um, page, just click on it, all right? And so that every time there is an update on this training, you can get it, all right? I just sent a friend request, if you've never followed me before on any handle, I'm sure that we will get back to you. I'm very, very sure. But I want to pray for you, all right, as we close. Um, I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to be raised by some of the most outstanding men uh, in this country, all right? But I also am ordained to be able to speak the word of blessing to you. So as a pastor, I'm going to speak the grace of God over your life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that you grow capacity, you grow competence. Mm -hmm. One of the dangers of the generation we live in is being in a hurry. I pray for you that you not be in a hurry. Mm -hmm. If you are right now running a business that looks like it's not working, I have been there before. I have spoken to two people on a Sunday morning. I've seen people laugh at me. It looks as if I'm not doing anything meaningful. But I've seen the grace of God keep me sane. As long as I was able to confirm, Lord, is this what I should be doing? And then I was able to confirm that. I began to stay with it. It didn't matter who was laughing or who was not following. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will get clarity. Mm -hmm. You will understand what it is you should be doing. Mm -hmm. You will not be dealing down and be trying, should I do this? There is no time for try and error. There is no time for it. Even if you are in your 20s, there is no time for try and error. So I pray for clarity for you. Mm -hmm. I pray for clarity for you. Mm -hmm. I pray you will find what it is that God has sent you here for. And I pray in the name of Jesus that in this journey as you go through it, no matter how discouraged you feel, I pray for staying stay power for you. I pray that you'll be diligent. I pray that you'll be consistent. I pray you will not give up. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I speak to the person who is on the wrong lane. You need, if you have been doing the wrong thing, receive the courage to start over and start afresh. Receive the grace to stop whatever it is that you're doing wrong. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, we are grateful that you tuned in. And right from this very studio at Singles Forum, we thank you. God bless you and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.